What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we'll be taking a quick look at the three properties of Beast Boost and their applications in VGC. If you've played in any format allowing Ultra Beasts, you know that Beast Boost raised the highest natural stat of an Ultra Beast every time it takes a knockout. For example, Zerkatry has an enormous 173 base special attack stat, which is so great that even an adamant nature and no special attack IVs is not enough to prevent Zerkatry from getting a special attack beast boost when it takes a KO. Unlike Zerkatry, however, many Ultra Beasts have flexibility in their beast boosts. For example, Celesteela typically will get a defense or special defense beast boost in VGC. But if it is an offensive variant, it could even get an attack or special attack beast boost. When EVing a Pokemon like Celesteela, it sometimes becomes difficult to figure out how to retain your EVing benchmarks while also ensuring you get a specific beast boost. This brings us to our first property of beast boost. There is no such thing as a beast boost tie. If two or more of the greatest stats on an ultra beast are tied, there is a beast boost order rule that determines which stat is actually raised. First attack, then defense, then special attack, then special defense, then speed. Going back to Celesteela, at the North American International Championships this year, I wanted my Celesteela to get a defense beast boost while maximizing my special bulk, in addition to some other goals of the spread. After testing my initial benchmarks in survival calc, I modified my Celesteel spread to have equal defense and special defense while retaining as much special bulk as I could, in this case 147 stat. Because defense is before special defense in our beast boost order rule, I could be certain that Celesteel would always get a defense beast boost from taking a KO. This was especially useful for my team, as two of Intimidate, Aurora Veil, or the Defense Beast Boost allowed Celesteela to beat standard Super Citrus Arcanine in a 1v1, which was enormously helpful. Let's look at another example. Suppose you had a Grassy Seed Nihilago, and you wanted to have as much bulk as possible while retaining max speed and a Special Attack Beast Boost. Can you find the minimum amount of special attack investment necessary to retain the special attack beast boost? Pause the video if you'd like to try, and I'll go over the answer in a few seconds. So how would we solve this? According to the beast boost order rule, if special attack and speed tie in their actual stats, then special attack is the beast boost given. As a result, we need to invest enough EVs to reach a 170 stat the same as the speed of max speed Nihilego. That puts Nihilego at 180 EVs in special attack, which leaves only 76 EVs for bulk. Property 2 of Beast Boost is a lot easier to understand than the first, and it's something you probably have encountered before if you're familiar with Generation 7 metagames. If an Ultra Beast KOs the final Pokémon on an opponent's team, then the Ultra Beast does not get its Beast Boost. This is different from something like Life Orb, which is revealed to the player at the final KO of the game. This is useful knowledge to be aware of in best of three play for conserving information. For example, suppose you are using physical Pheromosa that gets an attack beast boost, but you have kept information about it disclosed throughout the current game. Ice Beam is commonly carried by both physical and special Pheromosa, so using Ice Beam here doesn't reveal any information about Pheromosa straight away. Additionally, because Garchomp was the final Pokemon to be KO'd here, Pheromosa's beast boost did not activate so its set is further concealed for the next games in the set. Property 3 of Beast Boost is more like a mathematical application of Beast Boost, rather than a distinct property of the ability, but nevertheless deserves a mention. Basically, you want your Ultra Beast Beast Boost to match the stat that nature is boosting, if possible. Just like the examples with Celesteela and Nihilago, Wanting an Ultra Beast to have a specific Beast Boost often leads to trade-offs that can be abused when considering an information advantage. For example, consider Pheromosa. 
Modest Feramosa caps out at 203 speed with 252 speed EVs invested. If you wanted to be faster, Timid Feramosa would be required. Suppose we were cheeky and just outsped Modest Feramosa by one point. That would be 204 speed stat or 116 speed EVs. Even if we invest in Feramosa's special attack all the way, it doesn't come anywhere close to being larger than Feramosa's speed stat. As a result, we can conclude two things. First, speed boosting Feramosa must get a speed beast boost if it wants to actually take advantage of its nature. Second, Feramosa that get a special attack beast boost cannot have more than 203 speed. While this is pretty trivial for Feramosa, there are a number of other mathematical deductions we can make using this idea. As another example, suppose a careful Celesteela gets a defense beast boost. What do we instantly know about this Celesteela? Well first, we know its minimum defense investment. Because of our beast boost order rule, Celesteela would at worst have to tie its defenses to get a defense rather than a special defense beast boost. That means it must have at least 76 defense EVs. Moreover, on the special defense side of things, we know that Celesteel's special defense can't be higher than its defense, because it gets a defense beast boost. Therefore, the Celesteel cannot have more than 156 special defense EVs. Let's push this even further. Suppose the Celesteel is EV'd to survive Arcanine's Flare Blitz. A crude example of a Celesteel that survives Flare Blitz is 252 HP and 156 defense. If the leftover 100 EVs are placed in Special Defense, however, Celesteela does not get a Defense Beast Boost. 68 Special Defense is needed to tie the Defense stat from our goal. With EVs left over, we can increase Defense and Special Defense in increments of 1 apiece to use the remaining EVs. This means Celesteela's best Special Bulk for this spread is 252 HP and 84 Special Defense with the Careful Nature. Although you may be able to get slightly more bulk from optimization, uh, nevertheless, the bulk is going to stay around this area. If our nature was impish, however, there is much less information available. You could only determine a minimum amount of investment, not a maximum, which limits the scouting range and is therefore superior on your team sheet in case Pokemon.com publishes your team between days 1 and 2 of an event or something. As a summary, if possible, you should use a boosting nature that corresponds with your beast boost for information's sake. More math-related beast boost concepts can be found in the description below. That's all for today's Mechanics Monday. I don't really think people care all that much about which berries can't be eaten by a cheek pouch Pokemon when eaten with bug bite or that sort of thing, so I want to keep the style of this series as application-focused as I can so it's relevant to your VGC play. I think some weeks may include familiar mechanics to veterans of the VGC scene, but if I think they're important, they'll probably see a video so players unfamiliar with mechanics can be better informed. If you have some cool mechanics that you'd like me to show off, please comment them below. I'd love to take a look at them. Until next time, have a good one!